thing is that um, it's not just about me, it's also about your journey and I'm really invested in what you guys are doing, some more so than others, depending how much you want from me. But um, I want this to be a place where the first Sunday of every month that you can come and you can actually share something, yep, and you can express yourself, that we can have a conversation about the industry or I can have a conversation with you about, you know, how I had the hardest fucking month in the business I might be struggling to pay rent. You know, I've never encountered those things before, but I, I'm experiencing that now. Mm. want this to be a place where we can talk about how fucking difficult it is and how little return you get. And we're all doing this because we, in some way, shape or form, fucking love music and love being a part of the process. You know, that's the only reason you do it. I've been uh, across a lot of different platforms as a dancer, as a drummer, as a singer, interacting and so on and so forth and... Um, it doesn't matter what form of creativity you do, whether it's uh, filming or other, we're all going through the same types of struggles. Um, you know that now I'm a music producer and that's what I publicise myself as. And my, well, my goal is to be <coughs> one of the best, if not the best, producer in Australia and I eventually want to um, be working with people overseas. That's my goal and my dream. And all through my journey, I always used to say things that I didn't quite believe. And I do that because if I said it out loud, I was held accountable for what I said, you know. <clears throat> so if I said, like, I'm going to perform on this stage in this country, I would just say it, that this is what's going to happen. And just voicing it out loud, you know, I would kind of have it in the back of my mind, like, shit, I've told people I'm going to do that. I better fucking do it. That was just something that worked for me. Tell me, <clears throat> name what you do and what, what the big goal is. Yeah, so I'm Steve, everyone. Um, I'm a singer, rapper, producer as well, um, but my producing skills are pretty basic. I want to uh, eventually get heaps of albums out, be touring the world. What I want my music to be is I want somebody or people to be able to relate to my music the way that I relate to my favourite artists at the moment. I'm Robin, um, I'm a singer-songwriter, um, record producer myself. Uh, I've been writing music since I was 11, original content, and my goal is to, I guess, um, be able to reach my highest creative potential where I can sort of have an idea that sort of has no limitations and be able to um, have the means by which to see that come to fruition, whether it be an album or a video or a movie or something like that um, in the entertainment field. But, um, yeah, I guess there are probably a, a quite a few aspects of my creativity I'd like to tap into, but predominantly, yeah, I'd love to perform in front of thousands and thousands of people, hopefully more, um, and just build the best life I can. Of my highest potential as a musician, as an artist. How are you doing? Nice to see you, bro. Oh, a camera. Yeah, bro. Oh, this is quite intimate. This is punk, punk armor. <laughs> I'm on. How are you doing, bro? Good. Good to see you, bro. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Tell me, like, uh, I just want to know, like, who you are. You're obviously Aman, and um, what you do and what, what the, the big plans are. What's the main goal? I guess uh, I'm a audio engineer. I start off at, um, as an audio engineer. Um, and then I started um, producing music when I was like about 17. Um, but before all that, I was an artist. So I used to write music, used to write lyrics, rapper. Um, so this year, I guess I just decided to do me. But in the midst of all this, like the past couple of years, I was traveling to indigenous communities, making hip hop music videos with the, with the you know, working with the most amazing people and been all over ac across this beautiful country. So I did that for about three and a half years with a company called Indigenous Hip Hop Projects. While that was happening, um, I started managing an artist called Adrian Eagle. Um, so he now, now he's currently on tour with um, 360 and Fundamentals. So then we had to part ways. And then I decided, you know, like, I'm still young. So you got to follow what, what's, what's in my heart and you got to follow that dream. And that dream is to really create a vision for this country. Like, even though I'm originally from Canada, so I came here when I was, like, really young, about 13, 14. But when I did come down here, um, I really felt like this was my home. So then, I, so when I did write music and stuff and I did all these amazing things and I'm at this point where I realized that 
we need to build a super, super strong culture out here. Because I, like, I see what people are doing out in Sydney and they have such a beautiful community and they help each other and have each other's back. And out here, like, I just feel like this community is a bit segregated. So I just feel like what Spike is doing is super dope. And it's what I, what I stand for. It's just to bring people together through music. And I think the, the main purpose behind my goal is to actually create a sound for this country that will really resonate all across the world. Whether it's a fucking beat or a song, yeah. like that whatever. Um, sick. Um, like, yeah, getting, sharing what everyone's working on and mm -hmm. just like updating because you said it's once a month. So just seeing what we've come up with in the past month and Definitely. just doing that. Sort I mean, of stuff. wouldn't it be fucking cool? The Like for me, it would have been fucking cool when I was starting out to have somewhere or a, 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 a place to be able to go and be like, look, this fucking sucks, but this is what I've done. Yeah. yeah. You know, check it out. You guys don't need to like it. I remember the first time I showed my music to like my family and friends. I was absolutely fucking sweating balls and just shitting myself. I showed, um, I showed my best mate and that's it. And yeah. Like one cousin. Well, the, there's something good and bad about that. You know, when you show your mates and your family, like, you know, my mum fucking loves everything I do. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm just like, well, you're always going to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'd, I'd, I'd maybe prefer to have that type of mum and be like, this is, this is a little bit of shit. <laughs> I, I, because, you know, the, the, the support is amazing and I'm, I, I'm not taking for granted that I have supportive folks because... I mean, supportive and realistic. They're like, you know, the top one to three percent make it in the music industry. I'm like, thanks, I know, and I'm happy. Oh, so you've met my mum. Yeah, well, you know, I'm happy to be poor and whatever. This is just what I fucking love to do. So, um, you know, having a bunch of other people like yourselves, and and I was saying, Aman, that like I kind of know everyone individually. I've worked with some people more and less, but I want this to be a place where like we only invite dope people who are fucking serious, who are passionate. To build a, because you know, there's lots of people who hit me up and like, oh, dude, I'd love to come, and I'd be like, you know, I don't really like what they're about at this stage. I don't feel that they're serious, so I want it to be a kind of closed group. I don't mind if you guys have people that you feel like, you know, I got a friend who really wants to come by. I'm totally fine with that. I trust you guys that you're going to bring someone who would find it valuable. What what other things could you potentially find valuable in this kind of forum? I think. Um... I think being able to talk to someone who is at who's been at the stage where you're at and that you're starting to go to the place where you want to be, like for example, what's a normal royalty contract? You know, uh, how how did you get your stuff on the radio? Who did you talk to to do your posters? Who did you talk to for your video? You know, all these little things that you know, yeah, you end up starting to learn, but it's no one really knows it unless you you're in the industry, you know. So. Sure. You know, and, oh, do you have a connection at Triple J, you know, or something, you know? So yeah. just things like that where you can talk to people and learn from them and it's instead of information taking you a year to learn, you can learn it in one night. Definitely. You know, and you can fast track this stuff moving forward. I think that would be cool too. Nice one. Yeah. The, the networking part of it is huge, yeah. I think, because yeah. like, I only started doing this like maybe a few months ago. Yep. And I'm just like, where, who do I talk to? <laughs> what yeah. do I do? Sure. Um, and then, yeah, learning, like if you were to get like, pros and stuff or even yourself just like oh this is how you do this on logic and definitely stuff. i guess the thing is like in this environment i have i'm going to have people who are music producers and artists so i don't want to bore the fuck out of the artists who don't give a fuck about music production <laughs> but um i guess you know it's something I, I am mindful of i put like quick tips on instagram as much as i can like little tips on music production um but I'll definitely keep that in mind. It is something that we, you know, we're getting a music producer slash artist. I mean, Armani is also that. There's a lot of people who are kind of both worlds. What would you find valuable, my man? I'm interested to know. Um, I think sense of community is good. It's really valuable to artists to have people around them on the same journey and path. Um, like you said, to be able to um, feel like you're not, Doing it alone, I think that's kind of important as an artist um, and also a really great place to find inspiration from other people as well. Um, I think information is like a really important one, so just exchanging um, ideas on how to, I guess, grow as an artist um, and move along, that's kind of important. Um, but also just, yeah, I think it's, it's having a community will automatically have an impact on how you grow as an artist as well because 
just meeting people and connecting with people, you're already um, growing your kind of visibility. Like we yeah. all know who each other are now. So yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but when you're working with like digital media, if you can get like even as little as 10 people to like, like a comment or a status or a piece of you know, content you put up online, Facebook like opens its algorithm to you. So if you can get on a good enough level with, you know, even a kind of exclusive amount of people, um, enough to support you fast enough, you can just, it can really help expose you quite quickly. Okay. Um, so having access to that and a group of people that are on that same sort of wavelength, just will help you use it. And so I think that's important for growth and visibility. So I can see why Spike would be doing something like this. I thought, about, I thought it was a great idea. Um, and yeah, I guess also, I think it's it would be valuable, it would be valuable to have people to come through that can offer us um, some, insight. some insight. Yeah. yeah some, and what's the bigger picture for you? Okay, um, my name is Shelby. I musically, I'm a singer. I won't talk about what I do for a job. Um, just to clean off something. Um, <laughs> and the big picture is, I kind of just want to find out more about myself through music, and just like I'm interested in so many different styles. So, yeah. Cool. Nice one. I want to ask you a question. Um, what do you think makes a great song? Authenticity. Perfect. Purpose? Anything else? Quality? Oh, well, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Like, I mean, the quality of not the sound exactly because the raw, the raw stuff sounds dope. Well. Sure. Like, just the quality of the art. Mm. <laughs> Along those lines, yeah. Like, if you, if you put the passion in, if you love it, there's going to be someone out there that feels the same way about it. Definitely, man. You can't you sort of try and manufacture it. A pop song. There's something that every number one song in the world has in common. Do you know what it is? Forty fours. That's pretty fucking damn close. <laughs> <laughs> With a hook. Uh, also hook, but I'm thinking a little bit deeper than that. I'm not going to be an asshole and make you guys guess. I, I I think for me, and and you know, music is so subjective, but for me, the most um, relatable and, and important element of a song is the emotion. We're all human beings and we all feel lots of fucking emotions every single day. And when a song is emotive and it connects, it has a huge impact. It has a global impact. And that's why music's so powerful because it's something we all relate to and we all connect to. Humans just want to connect and making a community connect, music, blah, blah, blah. We love contact with other humans, most of us. And, um, you know, any kind of means to be able to connect is is very important. And I can definitely uh, make the assumption that the reason all you guys fucking love music is it does something inside for you guys. It really brings up some emotion. I can uh, relate back to some of the really shit times in my childhood and music was the antidote and drug that got me through that. Mm -hmm. You know, they were the things that really um, helped me surpass my demons. And if I didn't have music, maybe I would have gone to drugs, but I, I didn't. Um, so I think all those number one songs, all, everything they have in common is they really fucking strike a chord, pun intended. And <laughs> I remember when I heard Goiche, somebody that I used to know, I was overseas and listening to it the first time. Like my mate said, oh, have you heard this song? I said, no, I haven't actually heard it. It was out for a few months already in Australia. You're from Melbourne, is that? Yeah. 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 And, that's right. And I, I listened to his, uh, yeah, it's not good, yeah. I listened to his song and it really it really just had a, a strong emotional impact to me. It really hit me straight away and I was like, fuck, yeah, that, that deserves to be a hit. And I actually, I actually didn't know it was a hit already. I just said, oh, that's going to be a hit. And it's only just because I felt something so strong inside of me. So I, this is something that I always kind of um, consciously think of when I'm I'm writing music, and obviously when I'm writing with clients, it's different because I'm I'm pleasing the client, I'm doing what the client wants. But when I'm doing my own kind of personal stuff, it's really important to connect, and that's going to be really hard when you first start as an artist or as a music producer because you're so swamped by technicalities and fucking cables and trying to get shit to work that you sometimes forget that. So I think, um, you know, just keeping in mind how important that is, connecting with your music, connecting with yourself, not trying to make shit that you think other people want to fucking hear because um, as any music producer will probably tell you and artists, you know, we all go down that track of being like, oh, fuck, what's popular? What are people going to like? You need to fuck that off as early as possible 
and just make what the fuck you like. And it's going to develop over time because when you first start, no matter what you do, my first songs, and if I build up the courage and grow the balls to show you, maybe next month I will, my first songs were fucking terrible. Yep, I had I had lyrics and lines and hooks and they're okay, but I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. And um, I will try and build up courage to share those with you because I'd love you guys to see like where I started and, and how far I've come. And it's just time, you know. And when I was writing those songs, I was saying I just, I want them to be fucking perfect. I didn't even know what that meant. I was striving for perfection and um, like I didn't have the skills yet. I didn't have the skills, you know, so like, that was the best I could do. That for me was the quality. I couldn't take it any further. So there's no point getting frustrated. Like, is it right? It's better to be able to produce more, get more output, put more shit out, than sit on one thing for six months to a year and be like, oh, fuck, it's finished. It'd be better for you to really pump out um, stuff because you'll listen back to it in five, six years or one year or two years and then you'll really kind of realise how far you've actually come. That's it. I'm not going to crap on any more, guys. I feel like I've spoken enough, but that's really what I want to achieve. Um, it's really good. No, man, like, good off to you because at the end of the day, like, you're actually trying to do something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 um, there, there are, like, a couple of my homies that are, like, they run this night called Let's Five as well. So they pretty much just give upcoming artists just, like, a little platform to perform. So... Sounds good. That, that's happening in Richmond and they do that every I think Sunday nights and you know it'd be good like for us to go to events together you know and actually sure. just like build up and build up build up and just be like yo like we catch up once a month yeah, you right. know and you know share music give advice each other advice professional get advice get people to collab and all that yeah, kind of collab, stuff you know it's super dope I think so as well bro um, I'd really I really hope that's achievable and um, you just got to not be scared to fail because mm. everything I do, I, I honestly, I don't know if it's going to work and I'm trying a lot of things this year, especially you can see I'm putting out a lot of video content. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but Hyphy and I are getting better every week. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> Hyphy is talented as fuck. If anyone needs a videographer or photos, um, the dude's only 20, you know, and he's just stupidly talented. And I chased him last year when I, I met him with Tim Matic. And uh, I finally snagged him this year. So hopefully you stay with me for a while, bro. <laughs> um, that's it. So what, what I want to do is I want to, Maria, would you like to share one of your tracks? No pressure at all. Do you have one of your tracks with you? Um, I guess you can Oh, so it's on Spotify. Yeah. Fucking great. Great. So um, a bit of background, Maria started with me. Did you start at my house? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I had my studio in my home at that stage. Maria uh, came in and started wanting to produce. And, uh, yeah, I'll let, you, I'll let you have a listen. It's really really exciting, really beautiful. She did, did the lessons and learned how to mix, played it all herself. You got your own singer in as well. But what's it called, Maria? Uh, Utopia. You know, if that was one of my first songs, man, I would be so... Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking great. How, so, uh, quickly tell us, like, how, how did you make it? What did you do? Yeah, basically, my friend Danny, she had some lyrics that her friend wrote in, like, a poem. And her friend gave it to her to, like, try sing it in a song. So, we were... She was, like, at my house one night and we just gave it a go. Um, nothing really happened. And then a few months later, I was like to her, oh, I feel like making something. So, she came over, like... 12 a.m. <laughs> and we just did like a one take sort of recording with like the the four chords of the guitar um and then I kind of just started working on it because I really liked it um and then yeah it kind of just turned into that so I found like a like a drum beat that I liked and then I sent it to a drummer and he actually played it for me and great I, idea I found a um a 
chick on fiber uh, they played the strings on it um which is really awesome and then basically everything else on it that i kind of did greg you're gonna play something for us Come today on. as well <laughs> you, right. you said man you said <laughs> Wishing and hoping, no. <laughs> uh, I don't know, we kind of got into the studio and I didn't really have any ideas. I had kind of some lyrics written down and then we did the music and then I was like, all right, this is, you know, kind of sounding like this. And I originally had a song called Hula Hoop, which you can hear in the background. Um, so I wrote everything for Hula Hoop and then we started doing it and it just, I don't know, it just didn't pop right. And then, yeah, we, I had pretty much most of the chorus lyrics down, but in a different way. So Spike and I, we just sat there and organised everything and then, yeah, it all kind of came together. Nice, bro. And yeah. now Spike uses it for his videos. Yeah, for, I, <laughs> I love that music, bro. <laughs> 